Throughout history, there have been many places which became brutal sites of execution. Today in London there are some which have memorials to those who lost their heads or who were butchered at the hands of executioners. For example at Tyburn, there were people who were hanged, drawn and quartered, but today this area is on the busiest shopping street in the UK, Oxford Street. There were many places during conflicts that became places of execution, and in most towns and cities all around the world, there will have been at least one execution that has taken place there. Inside my own hometown, there was one of the final gibbeting executions to have taken place in Britain, with a criminal's remains strung up high from a gatehouse, left to rot and decay, following his execution. But in Belgium, in the city of Ghent, across the Lia River, is a bridge which has a very ominous and brutal name, and past. Today on the fortress we look at Execution Bridge, or Decapitation Bridge, one of history's most brutal execution sites. To support, please make sure to subscribe. Execution Bridge is a bridge, obviously, which crosses the Lia River in the city of Ghent, which today is a rather busy modern metropolis. It is found next to the city's Gravenstein Castle, a rather remarkable 12th century residence and fortress, and this itself has a history as being a court and a prison. Today the bridge is a popular tourist attraction, however it has a very dark and disturbing history. It was a site of execution for many years. From the latter part of the 14th century and even earlier, there were accounts of murderers and brutal criminals having been taken to the medieval stone bridge for their execution by the castle in Ghent. The final and most recent execution that occurred on the bridge took place in 1585, but in 1371 there was an execution which was scheduled for a father and a son. These two had been captured following their rebelling against the Count of Flanders, who condemned them to death in a brutal way. The Count of Flanders decided to trial using the bridge as an execution place, and he wanted to find out whether the love of a parent is bigger for their children, or whether the love of a child for their parents is greater. His experimental execution saw the father and son being told that whichever one of them would cut the head off the other would have their life spared. The father then told his son that because of this imposition, the son should execute his father because he was younger, and of course he would live longer. The son then stood on the bridge, and allegedly when the son was about to crash the blade of the sword down upon his father's neck, the blade or sword broke or shattered. With this story it's claimed that the duke then pardoned both of them, surprised at what he'd seen. Because of this there are engravings and statues on the side of the bridge, with the son and his kneeling father, with his hands bound, stood over him, with the son's sword raised. But these statues were taken away in the 18th century. The statues were seen by travellers, and one recounted the legend in his diary, and claimed that, I also saw in the bridge the place where people's heads are cut off, where two statues have been erected to commemorate a son cutting off his father's head. Public executions were also carried out in the market in Ghent, but the executions on the bridge were close to the castle, and there were throughout the centuries many people taken to their deaths there. Lots of people would flock to see these executions, and Execution Bridge became known as Decapitation Bridge, for the fact that so many people throughout the centuries, some of the most serious criminals, would lose their head on the bridge. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.